excited about these boats and we're, we chose to exhibit these and introduce them officially at the uh, Miami Boat Show because they represent a commitment uh, for Trophy to the Southeast style of fishing. Uh, Trophy has a long, proud heritage of uh, rugged, serious fishing machines uh, designed for, for rough water, uh, particularly in the Northwest. Uh, in the past, we've dabbled in the, uh, in the Bay Boat Arena with uh, one model, but uh, we heard from our dealers and our customers that we needed an entire line to properly compete. So uh, we've leveraged our brunt of resources. Uh, we have a team that's worked very hard to uh, develop these boats, and we've released them in record time. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to point out just a few key features and uh, point out a few individuals, and uh, then we're going to invite uh, gentlemen up to walk through the boats in more detail. Uh, we have uh, the 2401, which is a, a bay boat that's just a little bit over 24 feet. That's the uh, flagship for our line. We also have the 2001, 2101 that I'm standing on now, just, uh, just over 21 feet. And we have uh, the introductory model on the line, a 1901. Uh, these boats are all fiberglass. They have a uh, fully laid uh, lined uh, uh, hull system, uh, fiberglass stringer system, all stainless steel components, and we're proud to offer uh, Mercury Power. Uh, we feel that we offer the best choice of either four-stroke or two-stroke uh, power through our Mercury partners. Um, I want to point out Pat Lake, our VP of Sales, right back here. Raise your hand, Pat. And uh, also, I'd like to introduce uh, or point out uh, Todd Kendall, VP of Marketing. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have worked very hard uh, on delivering these boats. Kirk Hawley, many of you may know him, uh, couldn't be here tonight. Today he's, uh, he's ill, uh, but I know that many of you will want to speak with him, and I can uh, facilitate that in the future if you have detailed questions about the boats uh, that I can't answer. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Barry Hoffman, who is a professional guide who uh, tested these boats with us during a photo shoot. And Barry's going to walk you through uh, the boats, give you a few details, and give you his impressions of them. Thank you, Brian. Hey, gang, thanks for showing up. Uh, as you said, my name is Barry Hoffman, and um, I worked, so worked with a media company who invited me down uh, when they were shooting the brochures for these boats. And uh, I'm a, a little background on myself. I'm a professional guy down in Isla Mirada for 17 years, been down there 25 years. And uh, I got the chance to get out actually in a larger one. All three of the boats were out that day actually shooting in some very sloppy seas. And um, we got back to some secluded area and just getting to ride around the boat. I came right really impressed with the boat. And the really the important thing that I found was the boats are extremely versatile. Um, they have the ability to get in shallow water but also get you out in deep water. As anybody in South Florida knows, our fishing conditions are extremely versatile. They're varied. We go from we can go out in the ocean on one day, or go in the back country towards flamingo, and fish for the shallow species like redfish. Um, even on the ocean side flats, these, these, the vessels can do that. Can track bonefish in the slightly deeper water. You really can do a lot of things with these vessels. Um, on this particular day, we ran out. It was blowing. It, was, it wasn't the best day. A cold front just passed through. It was northwest wind. It was mm, close to 20, 25 knots, and it was really cranking. So we ran the boats back to a secluded little basin, and. Uh, and we got around taking some great shots. We had a trolling motor on it to get us in there. We were in extremely shallow water. I happened to be in the, in the large vessel there, and I really was impressed. I had a trolling motor on the bow. We got in skinny water. We were catching uh, smaller fish, but still, we were able to do what we needed to do in a boat that size. What did also impress me is running back to the dock. Now, we had a pretty good ride, tough ride back, and in that vessel, I was impressed by the strength of the hull, the rigidity. In a, in a lesser boat, and for those that are probably are all boaters here, you know riding, riding in a quartering sea is, is probably perhaps one of the toughest things to do with a vessel. The boats take a pounding on the boat, and when you're in a lesser vessel, there's this shuddering that goes on, and you can tell when the boat is not solid. It really was not the case. It was not impressive. Like, I wanted to come back and speak about it, and they invited me. But again, the boats were so solid, it, pounding through the seas, we got back to Island Rada and finished up the day, but all three boats, uh, these three are very similar models were with us, and I really was impressed by that point. You know, even just looking at the boats, you look at the way the boat is finished. Um, it's a real quality product. It's finished well. I have some boats, two boats at home, and the, my lesser boat, you know, it's got spatter coat all on everything. This boat is finished. You just don't have a drop-in liner in the back. They really took the time to think this boat out. They have really quality components. The perco latches, the perco rod holders. Um, you, you can do just about anything. As I said earlier, um, 
being versatile is so important in fishing. You really have to have the ability to change gears if the weather's not good. But even off on another tangent, if you like snorkeling and diving in South Florida, these boats, even the large one, the gunnels are low enough that you can get in and out of the boat without much trouble. <laughs>